Come in. Hey, man. I just wanted to check in on you. How you holding up? Honestly, I'm tired. Things are going well here. Our base is becoming more formidable and we've recruited more people to help. But Ace Beach and I, we need a ship. I know you guys are determined to get out of here, though you never really told us why. It's... it's something I can't talk about. I get it, and that's okay. You guys saved my life, and if I can help you get a ship, well, maybe I'd be able to find my way back home eventually too. What I'm trying to say is that I owe you my life, and I hope I can pay it back to you one day. You think Bish and Alex are doing all right? Bish is a capable fighter, determined too. I don't know Alex that well, but she seems like a strong woman. A group of just the two of them means they can keep a low profile and move quick. I'm confident they'll return safely. I wouldn't have sent them otherwise. Well, I'm looking forward to when they return. That Alex lady is pretty cute after all. Maybe she'd even let me take her on a date. <laughs> Watch yourself with her partner. Don't bite off more than you can chew. We covered a lot of ground today. What do you think of setting up camp for the night? There's still a few good hours of daylight left. I say we keep pushing until nightfall. I'm beat, Bish. We have plenty of rations for that. No, it's, it, it's not that. Do you know how hard it is to find these advanced components these people are willing to trade? With those, we'll be able to advance our research significantly, and we need them to- Build our own spaceship and get off this planet. I know, you guys keep bringing that up like this is some kind of terrible place. It's not that bad here, you know? You don't understand. We have something important that we need to take back to our home, and we've already been here over a year. The longer it takes us to escape, the worse it'll be. Okay, I get it. I'm sorry. I forget that you have your own home somewhere out there. I, I'd want to go back to it too. Let's keep moving. We'll get you those advanced components you want so badly, and if you end up actually building a ship, maybe I'd come with you. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Let's go. While Bish and Alex moved northbound to make their trade, things continued to progress back in New Houston. Their geothermal generator was finally up and running and its defensive barrier was in place. All they had to do now was connect its conduits to the base's power supply. Blinkstrik finished researching smithing, which was one step closer towards their auto turrets. Their med bay's expansion was almost complete. They moved their beds to the furthest wall, which would allow room for four more beds. Bish and Alex's trading caravan continued making steady progress to their destination. Their geothermal generator's protective wall was finally finished and they continued their expansion inside New Houston. Gorda recovered from the plague and she was tamed to where they could ride on her back. Right then, they got a nearby distress call of a refugee being chased in their area. The Blue Pond kinship was hunting more people again. They answered the call and said they would offer protection if he joined their colony. He graciously accepted and the comm shut off. He arrived shortly after and ran as fast as he could to his new home. He was just a kid. Just as their new recruit made his way to the base, the tribe's people showed up. Mounted on wild animals, they came charging towards the base. The men hurried towards their defensive position by the generator, but the enemy was too fast. Digital led the charge and readied his shotgun. He screamed as he fired a shot into the tribesman riding a wild boar. Topian Phantom quickly fell in line while Digital hit the man in the chest with another shot, killing him instantly. Arrows flew at them until one soared across their sandbags, hitting Phantom in the head and piercing his skull. He dropped dead on the spot. Digital and Topi cried out in anger. Ace and Blink Strike saw it unfold from afar while they were reinforcing their defenses. Digital fired another shotgun blast into the closest raider's chest. Her corpse slumped off the mounted llama as they exchanged fire throughout the dense jungle. Arrows continued to hiss past them while they fought. It was hard getting a clear shot on the remaining tribe's people. Topi's adrenaline was so high that she didn't realize she was hit by two arrows and losing a lot of blood. Ace ordered her to fall back while they finished the fight. One more raider died in the crossfire, and Blinkstrike shot a burst from his machine pistol that downed a second one. This caused the final tribesman to flee. He was about to round the corner and escape until both Ace and Digital fired two well-placed shots, gunning him down. The skirmish was over, but at what cost? The wounded tribal woman cried out in pain, asking for help. Digital stared at her with cold eyes, stripped her clothes off her and said, This is for Phantom, and bashed her head in with the butt of his gun. When Glomus heard the news about Phantom, his heart sunk. They planned to dig another grave outside of New Houston. Topi found Gorda outside of their base and rode her to the med bay. Blinkstrike hobbled over shortly after with medicine and began treating her wounds. While everything was unfolding at their home, Fish and Alex finally arrived at their destination. 
The negotiations were quick and to the point. The Pact of Engo was pleased with their new clothing and held their end of the bargain. As soon as the transaction was made, Bish and Alex said their goodbyes and hurried back home. They didn't want to waste any time. Back at New Houston, Glomus and Gorda transported Phantom's body to the freshly dug grave. He laid him in the hole and buried him. I'm sorry it ended here. We won't forget what you've done for us, Glomus said. He said his goodbyes and returned home. This was too much for the new recruit to take in. He was being antisocial. They gave him his space while he acclimated to his new home. His name was Otto Dave. Otto Dave was a 15-year-old kid who was incapable of violence and didn't have many skills, but he was young and could learn a lot from the others. He was a war refugee and his family was caught in the violence of the Blue Pond kinship, leaving him as an orphan. Things were starting to calm down and they planned on having a funeral for Phantom in two days to honor his sacrifice for New Houston. Topian and Digital were still recovering from the fight, but neither of them were in a critical state. Fish and Alex were still making good progress on their return home. They currently dumped the corpses of fallen enemies outside of their base and they were tired of looking at them in passing. Phantom's death made them realize how weak their defenses were. They needed to change that. They began laying out plans for a defensive wall to surround their base. This would funnel raiders to the front of New Houston. This was just phase one of their plan. The inside of their mountainous base was constantly being worked on, and in between central heating and air conditioning and everyone having their own private, fully furnished living space, it was finally beginning to feel like a comfortable place to live. While Digital was working hard in the rain, their scanner picked up something new. A lone mechanoid was heading straight towards their base. Armed with a charged lance rifle, Ace, Digital, and Blink Strike had to move quickly to take it down. They were lucky. The men were in a blind spot around a corner and the mechanoid ran straight into them. Blink Strike took out his melee weapon while the others fired at it point blank. It was strong. It incapacitated Blink Strike immediately. If they got hit by its charge lance, that would be trouble. Ace and Digital charged it and engaged in melee combat. It focused on Ace, who was equipped with masterwork armor, and he was able to absorb the blows it delivered while Digital hammered at it with his heavy club from behind. Even with a 2-1 to one advantage, it was a tough opponent to bring down. Finally, after what felt like hours, Digital's club smashed into its back and the mechanoid collapsed. It was destroyed. They also noticed that Ace's right lung was completely destroyed in a previous fight, which explained why his movement was so sluggish lately. Glomus rode in on Gorda through the heavy rain to rescue Blink Strike. He wasn't in a critical state, but Glomus still carefully bandaged up the bruises on his body. That afternoon, the rainstorm passed and they continued building their perimeter wall. Once they finished the first wall layer, they planned to reinforce it with a second layer to force the raiders to funnel into their front entrance. They continued working into the evening and they completed machining research. They were one step closer towards auto turrets. As the evening turned to night, Phantom's funeral was underway. They went over to pay their respects. Many of you know that Phantom crash landed on this planet just like us. We took him in and he helped us make New Houston what it is today. Just like us. He wanted to find a way to return home, but we failed him. I failed him. I know you wish things were different here. I wish things were different here, but they ain't. Ace Speech and I will do everything we can to protect you. We have plans in place and we're gonna fortify our defenses and do better. We're in this together. And if you aren't, then I suggest you pack your things and find somewhere else to call home. I'm, I'm sorry, Phantom. Thank you for your service. It will not be in vain. To Phantom. To Phantom. To Phantom! To Phantom. I'm sorry you died saving my life. The funeral came to a close and they packed it in. The mood in New Houston was sad and somber that night as they mourned the loss of Phantom. The next step of their defensive plan was to make a large clearing at the front of their base. They would have to chop down all the trees in the vicinity. Digital worked hard most of the day making good progress on the clearing. That evening, Topi was able to finish the west wall. They immediately planned out the second lair. Things were moving in the right direction. Early the next morning, their short-range scanner picked up a herd of a man-hunting pack of emus running wild through their area. Instead of provoking them, Glomus ordered everyone to stay inside and let them pass through. This seemed to be working well until one of the angry emus started pecking at their door. Digital readied his shotgun and stood by the entrance, but the emu lost interest and moved away. Blinkstrike joined Digital and they remained by the doorway to stand guard, just in case. 
The emus continued to run amok through their growing zones, but weren't causing any harm. Digital and Blinkstrike finally left their post to grab some food. Of course, at this time, Bish and Alex finally returned from their travels. If the emus spotted them, they might be swarmed. They had to take action. Digital and Blinkstrike moved back into position while Ace made his way to support them. As Ace rounded the corner to the front entrance, Blinkstrike readied his melee weapon and opened the door. The bloodthirsty animals immediately turned and charged at him. Blinkstrike would hold the line at the door while the other men opened fire over his shoulder. One of the emus dropped dead, but two more swarmed Blinkstrike. They took him down and charged over him into Digital and Ace. Topi saw what was happening, pulled out her elephant tusk dagger, and charged in to help. Digital took a lot of hits from the crazed animals, but he held the line. The three of them beat the rest of the emus into submission and stopped the attack. Topi carried Blinkstrike to his bed and Digital went to his room to rest. Blinkstrike was only banged up with bruises and got himself up shortly after Topi left his room and went back to the entrance to finish off the wounded emus. After taking his frustration out on the emus, he went into their workshop and finished their gunsmithing research. Later that night, they had a bit of a surprise when an adult elephant self-tamed and became domesticated. They planned on trying to train her to be a useful pet for the colony. It looked like the emus had the last laugh on Blinkstrike as his right leg got infected from their fight. He already lost his left leg from an infection, and they wanted to treat him as quickly as possible to prevent it from becoming an issue. Glomus tended to his leg as carefully as he could and told him to rest up. His treatment was highly effective. Blinkstrike developed immunity the following night and was back on his feet. A few hours later, their scanners caught another raiding party from the Blue Pond Kinship trying to use the thunderstorm for cover and catch them off guard. It was a large group of savages that wanted revenge for New Houston's interference with the skirmish the week prior. Alex jumped out of bed and prepared a defensive line of sandbags for coverage. They didn't want to lose another colonist to the Blue Pond Kinship like they did with Phantom. The storm cleared and the enemy began their assault towards New Houston. Everyone was prepared, gripping their weapons tight, ready for another battle. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Special thanks to all the voice actors and their awesome work. I also want to thank my newest patrons, Koizen and Nathan. Thank you both so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And of course, I always want to thank all of my patrons who are generously supporting my channel so that I can continue making content like this with the goal of one day making this a full-time thing so I can make content like this much more regularly. Thank you so much. And as always, thanks for watching. And until next time, have a good one.